All right, thank, thank you very much. Uh, you know, when, when he said 1995, I saw some of you go, wow, that guy's old, man. And uh, maybe I am. I tell a lot, uh, when I was been walking around the uh, campus here, you know, when I went to school here, we're standing right where I used to park my car. I had a 1978 280Z, it was black, I just got it painted, and I parked it just somewhere right in here in a corner spot so nobody would pick my doors, you know, try to keep it nice. But anyway, it's been a long time. So anyway, my goal here today really is to encourage you in many different ways, all right? I'm gonna share a little bit about myself just right up front. He shared some of it. And then I'm gonna really get into what I would like to have heard when I was here and it really encourage you on your next step. When you start to graduate, what the future looks like and some of the things you gotta do to make it happen. At the end, we'll ask questions. You can ask questions, whatever you want to of me. If I didn't cover something you really wanna know, I give it a shot. If I don't know the answer, then we'll find somebody who does. Does that sound good? All right. Of course, I did, I graduated here in 1995. I went to Hickson High School. Anybody here a Hickson High School graduate? Nobody? All right, well, I went to Hickson High School. That's where I met my wife. Uh, in the eighth grade in junior high there. And so uh, we went to school here together, graduated. I co-opted while I was here. I was an intern uh, and I would work a semester. I'd go to school a semester. And during that time, I worked at TVA, all right? So I ended up, I've been there 28 years. Can you believe that? Sounds terrible when you think about it. I used to be the kid there. There was all these old guys there that would, would try to take care of me and they would, they would go around, they put their arms around me and say, now Scott, you gotta make sure you do this and you do this. And they were old, man. They were like 50 years old. Well, I'm 50 years old now. And time goes by quick. You know, and I talked to some of you as you walked in and out of here. I was asking how your day was and have you had a rough day? Has it been fun? Has it been hard? And you go, yeah, it's been hard, but we know, you know, it goes by fast. And I know you don't feel like it at the moment because it's tough. When you're in the middle of really hard work, it feels like it lasts forever, doesn't it? Does it feel like forever? Oh, yeah. It feels like forever. But the reality is it does really go by fast, and so you gotta make the most of every bit of it, all right? And so my presentation is gonna be about that, and hopefully you get something of value from this by the end of the day. Sound good? All right, here we go. You know, in the early 1900s, down in South Texas, just outside of Beaumont, there was a farmer who had a lot of land. He was struggling at the time to make ends meet. He couldn't, he couldn't feed his family. And so he got to this point where he said, I've gotta sell my property. And so he went out there and he was trying to sell it. And one day, a couple of oil company representatives came along. They knocked on the door and they said, sir, you know, we think we got, uh, got something for you. We think you might have oil on your property. If you let us drill for it and if we discover any, he said, we'll pay you royalties on every barrel we pump out. Well, the farmer, right, he was in trouble. And so he says, absolutely, let's drill that oil. Let's go for it. And so they started to drill. And as they started to drill, they came on oil. Now back in those days, the derricks were made out of, of wood. And when they came on a gusher, that's what they call it in Texas, right? Gusher. When they come on a gusher, it would completely obliterate the derricks. Greater the, uh, the greater destruction, the greater the excitement, because that meant there was an abundance of oil down below. Well, when this oil well came in, it completely obliterated the derricks. Over 100,000 barrels of oil pumped out. It was the world's introduction to spindle top. This is a picture of it. Spindle top, most productive oil well in history. Three oil companies came out of that one field. And here's the most important part. The farmer, he became an instant millionaire. Isn't that awesome? Instant millionaire. Or did he? You know, the reality is he'd been a multimillionaire ever since he had acquired all this land. But until he drilled for the oil, discovered the oil, and brought it to the surface, it really was a little value to him, his family, the community, everything, right? So why do I tell this story? People are pretty much the same way, all right? We have a great deal inside of us. Each one of you has a great deal inside of you, but until you go discover the greatness that's in you, bring it to the surface and take it to the marketplace, it's really a little value to you, to your family, to the community, to the world. My point here is that this, you, my friends, what was the title of my presentation? Anybody remember what it was? You were engineered for success. Who said that? Hey, very good, man. Are you an upperclassman? Yeah. I figured that. Smart answer, smart answer. <laughs> Just joking. Excellent. You were engineered for success, right? You were born to win, right? And people are going to tell you certain things through your life, and some of you may have already had it, had people tell you things that, that is opposite of that, right? That drags you down, that really encourages you to do to uh, really just kind of get by in life. But what I want to encourage you to do is to go beyond just getting by to some real success, right? Significance, I'm gonna say that word again later on, significance. You wanna have a life of significance, 
okay? Life of significance. You were designed to win. You're born to win. But you must be the winner you're born to be. You first got to plan to win. You got to prepare to win. All right, so planning, preparing, if you ever want to expect to win. And when we talk about planning to win, what does that mean? What does, anybody got any idea? What does planning to win mean for you? What do you think? Well, that's all good, man. You do want to take a shower on a regular basis. I mean, who wants to be around a guy that doesn't take a shower and has some hygiene, right? Those are all important things. Planning is important, right? Various things in that. Setting goals. And that, that's the one I want you to think about when you talk about planning. Setting goals for yourself. That's important. But just setting the goal doesn't get you to the, to the successful, successful part of execution of that goal. What really gets you there is all the work that goes along with it. The preparation that takes place. What are you doing right now at UTC Mox? I, can, I had to say it at the end, UTC Mox. What are you doing? You're, you're doing this, right? You're preparing. Someone along, the li along your life or you individually planned to be here. Your parents might have, a family member might have, whatever. You're here. You're planning. Now it's time to prepare. And preparing is about doing the work. Doing the work. And the work never ends. All right? You think, well, I'll get to the point where I graduate and I'll have my certificate. I mean, I'll, I'll have my diploma. I'm ready to go. Fantastic. You've met a milestone in your life. But now it's the next goal. I got to get that job. And now I got to, I want to move up in that job. All those things have to, you want to happen, but it requires, what is it? It's a four letter word. It's work, work. You got to work. You got to, matter of fact, you want to get in advance from other people. You want to advance beyond others. You got to work a little harder. You got to work a little harder. And then when you do all those, you plan to win, you prepare to win, got all that happen. Then you can expect to win. You can expect your boss to come in one day and say, Man, what's your name, my friend? Jacob. Jacob, great job. Man, you've been working so good for us lately. I mean, I'm so, I'm so impressed by your work ethic. We're going to give you a promotion. But it doesn't happen unless Jacob puts the work in, right? He's got to put that work in. It has to happen that way. It doesn't happen any other way. Now, there's some things. Let's see if I get this. There's some things in life that, that this is an illustration. And this is from my mentor, right? I, we talked about the Zig Ziglar Corporation. I was introduced about Zig Ziglar back when I was 16 years old, working in a hardware store over in Hickson, Tennessee. Uh, my, the owner of the store introduced me to this concept of Zig Ziglar and these ideas. Anyway, several years later, I ended up working at TVA, ended up out in Dallas, Texas in my 30s for a, for a couple of days. I knew where Zig Ziglar's office was. I went around to see him, said, hey, I want to work for you. The rest is history. I got to work for him as a motivational speaker and learning from him. Google or look on YouTube for Zig Ziglar. You'll get some, it's really entertaining. He's an entertaining speaker. He's passed away. He's old. You'll see him dressed in 70s clothes. You'll kind of laugh, but there's some great wisdom there. This is straight from him. This is his idea. His idea is around the stairway to the top. How do you get to the top? Well, you got to have a positive self-image. I just said, you know, you got to be able to think about yourself as being engineered for success. But then there's key relationships you've got to have along the way. You got to build strong relationships with the people that you work with, with the people that are in your inner circle and then work towards goals, attitude, work, and desire. All those things have to happen to climb the ladder of success. The important part is the ladder of success is the, or the stairway to success is the only way to go. There is no elevator. You can't take the elevator. You can't be microwaved into being a great engineer, a great leader, a great manager, whatever it is you want to do. It doesn't happen without, without work. You got to work hard on it, right? You got to work hard. And Zig, of course, says this, right? There is no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs. But there's two things. There's two things that keep us from realizing our goals. There's two things that keep us from really going the extra mile and ending up where we really want to be as individuals, right? You want success, right? You want to be happy? You want to be happy? You want to be prosperous? You know, some people want to be unreasonably prosperous. Is that you? Why not, man? It's all right. It's better to have money than not have it, so why not go for it, right? That's right. Some people want to be unreasonably prosperous. We want to be happy, we want to be healthy, we want to be prosperous. Everybody wants that in some format. So, but there's a couple of things that keep us from getting there. There's this guy named Joe Jones. Joe, oh, Joe Jones, all right? He was, on, he was on his way to New York, or excuse me, to Boston. He was in New York and he was on his way to Boston. And he was scheduled to catch the 220. At 220, he was supposed to get on the plane and fly to Boston from New York. So he's walking down the uh, 
jetway there and, and he's in the airport. You know, have you been in the like uh, Northgate Mall or Hampton Place Mall or one of those? Sometimes by GNC, they used to have a uh, place where you get weigh yourself. Put a quarter in or 50 cents or whatever, jump on it, and it weighs you. Well, this old Joe Jones, as he's walking through the airport, he sees this machine here, calls out to him, check your weight, uh, and I'll tell your fortune. So he puts a quarter in it, he jumps up on the scale, says, your name's Joe Jones. You weigh 188 pounds, you're gonna be catching the 220 to Boston. Well, he sat there and he heard that come back, and he thought, holy cow, what, what's going on here? So he stepped off and he says, that's kind of odd, let me try that again. So he grabs another quarter, he sticks it in the machine, he jumps up on the scale and says, your name is still Joe Jones, you still weigh 188 pounds, and you're still catching the 220 to Boston. We well, got back off the scale and he says, now something's up, this must be something like, uh, anybody watch the Carbonero effect on television, one of those shows, some little hidden camera kind of show or something's going on here. So uh, he goes to the restroom, he's got his bag, he changes his clothes, he puts on a little disguise, so to speak, and he comes back to get on that scale. He says, I'm gonna find out what's really going on here. So he puts the quarter in the machine, he jumps up on the scale, he goes, your name is still Joe Jones, you still weigh 188 pounds, but you just missed 220 to Boston. All right, boy, the message, the moral behind that story is simply this. We get distracted in life from our goals. You've got some goals, you've got plans, and then life affects those goals. Life happens, okay, and you get distracted. Time goes on and you let some of those goals go to the wayside. Distractions is the first thing. The second is this. Have you heard of the bullfrog theory, anybody? The bullfrog theory? All right, well, the, well a bullfrog, if you wanna cook a bullfrog, you don't just get a whole boiling pot of water and throw that sucker in there, right? You don't do it. Rather, you get a cold pot of water, you start to heat the water up a little bit, you put the bullfrog in there when it's cold, He's in there relaxing, enjoying the water, and it gets a little warmer, it gets a little warmer, and he goes, oh man, this pot feels so good. I just, I don't think I can get out of it. He's drinking his Coca-Cola, I mean, things are good. And all of a sudden, bam, he's, he's dead. He's been boiled. This represents for all of us complacency, the status quo, living in the status quo. I know, I know y'all are thinking, this guy's crazy. But I'm telling you, take some of these, Apply them in your life, especially when you, when, you, when you go to that work assignment. Be thinking about these things. You'll think back on this day maybe sometime in the future, five years, 10 years, whatever. Hopefully it brings value. Complacency. When you start feeling like this, real comfortable, you've got to upset the status quo, whatever that is. Organizations, I lead an organization. I've got about 175 people that are direct reports to me. I've got about 2,000 contractors that work in various uh, areas of our company that work in our, for, for my organization. And um, it's easy to get in this status quo and you gotta find ways to upset it. Upset the status quo for you personally or even for those around you to cause almost an emergency in some cases so that people can rally and get back on course to get to that goal. Okay, does that make sense? Seem reasonable? So losing focus and the status quo, the status quo. On this stairway that we talked about, the stairway to success, Self-image is very important. How you see yourself. Nobody's gonna see you better than you see yourself, okay? So if you struggle with the way, am I, am I good enough for this? Am I, am I smart enough for this? You gotta find a way to get over that, right? So whatever that may be for you. Higher, maybe it's higher education, maybe it's, I don't know what it is, but you, you'll have to find a way to improve that self-image. It's very important. Thinking about yourself, the way you think about yourself, because then you want to build incredible relationships. You cannot have you cannot go through a, a, a job assignment, working for a company, and have bad relationships with those you're working with. Guess what? When it comes time for a promotion, they're gonna say, uh, no, for, I remember your name, Jacob. Jacob, right? You told me that. I should have asked somebody else's name, right? Right about now. But they may say, man, Jacob, uh, Jacob, I can't hire Jacob for this, man. This guy, uh, he, he's rude to everybody. He treats everybody terrible, treats them like they're dirt. You know, we're not going to hire, we're not going to move Jacob. Matter of fact, we're going to move him over into the corner working on something, not this big project, but this little project. Right? Thanks, Jacob, for playing along. I know that's not you, is it? That's right. But you see what I mean. So those relationships, the way you treat people is a game changer in the way you have the opportunity to move up that ladder of success. The way you make people feel. The way you make people feel. So think about it. When you're relating with people and talking with people, working with people, how do you make them feel when you're with them? You want them to feel better, after they've worked with you than before they did. 
better, you want those relationships strong, then having strong goals and working to them, don't lose in focus, an attitude, positive attitude. Would you like to work with somebody on a, uh, y'all do, do project teams, right? You like working with somebody who has a negative attitude, can't do anything, tells you all the reasons why something doesn't work, or do you like to work with someone who has ideas and say, hey, let's try this, let's try this. That didn't work, but hey, I think we could do this. Which one do you like better? The naysayer or the person who has a positive attitude? Positive attitude, right? Much better. Same, same in the workforce. I don't want to hire anybody that's got a negative attitude. I want somebody with a positive attitude. And the most important is the most important after you're very, you get your education, you're very smart, that's great. But if you don't work, I don't want you working for me, all right? I need people who can work. And if you work hard, you're going to get paid for that work. All right, you're going to get paid for that work. And the game changer becomes uh, this, this desire, desire. How bad does somebody want it, right? How bad does somebody want it? Now, back in the Old West, if you anybody like Western movies, seen some old Western movies like Young Guns or something like that, it's an old movie, but it's pretty good. Well, those guys back in the old West, in the West, you know, the, the thing that, that came out between in the, in the Western times was the six shooter, right? The old gun, the six shooter. And it really leveled the playing field for the little guy and the big guy. Because when he, the gun came out, now things were even Steven, so to speak. It was called the great equalizer at the time. Well, desire is the great equalizer today. It's the six shooter that you have. It's the passion you have, the desire you have, to really go beyond, beyond the expectations. Beyond expectations. And that gets me to this, right? The highway of success. When you make the deal, when you graduate, how many, how many of you are close to graduating, by the way? Anybody graduate in December coming up? All right, got some in May coming up, maybe? All right. So when you graduate, you're gonna go make a deal with somebody, hopefully they're gonna hire you, right? You need a job when you get out of here. You're gonna make a deal with somebody, they're gonna say, all right, uh, let me give me, how about your name? Jasia? Lajasia. I still ain't got it. Ajasia. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Ajasia. Ajasia, here's the deal. We're going to want you to come to work uh, every day, five days a week. We want you to be at work at 8 o'clock, and you can get off at 445. We're going to give you an hour break in the day for lunch. We're going to pay you this amount, amount of money every week, and uh, we just want you to give an honest day's work. Is that a deal? We, are, we agree, and we agree on some amount of money, right? All right, well, at the end of the day, she comes and she does all that. She works 8 to 4.45, she takes the hour break. She gives an honest day's work. She's loyal to the company. All that's good. I owe her money, I pay her. At the end of the day, we're even, right? I, I met my obligation, you met yours. But here's the game changer, all right, for everyone. The game changer is this. If she comes to work every day, works 8 to 5.15, 8 to 5.30, she gives a little bit more in the enthusiasm. She gives a little bit more in the work and loyalty that she gives each day. She goes the extra mile every day, always going the extra mile, doing a little bit more than she's paid to do. The day will come when we're gonna give a promotion to somebody. We're gonna be looking for somebody to be the next manager of this group. We're gonna be looking for somebody to be the next general manager of this group. We're gonna be looking for somebody to be the next vice president of this organization. And they're gonna give it to who, didn't, who went the extra mile? Who's that person we can count on? Got the positive attitude, loyal, enthusiastic? It's her. Okay? That's the game changer. Everybody else, they did their job, they're, they're, they're status quo. You don't want to be status quo. Do you want to be status quo? You don't want to be status quo. Well, maybe you do, but I'm encouraging you not to be status quo. Status quo stinks, all right? Don't be it. Go the extra mile because the good news is when you're on the road, how many of you drive into school every day? Drive in? Get in traffic, man, traffic's terrible, isn't it? Here's the good news, on the road to success and the extra mile, there are no traffic jams. It's all yours, man. How much work you wanna put into it, you can go all the way, all right? You hear the way I talk, I'm a southerner, I'm a, you say, how'd this guy make it, you know? Um, I worked real hard, all right? Uh, I'm just, just worked real hard. I'm not the smartest guy in the room, I just worked real hard, you know? I did what I had to do along the way to do the right thing for people along the way, and then work really hard, really hard. And so I'm gonna close here, Let's see what I got here. I'm gonna close here with some key takeaways. You were engineered for success, man, have some positive self-image. You were designed for this, all right? 
you know about design. When you design something, you want people to use it, you want people to get value out of it, and you want, to, you want it to work really well, right? When you design whatever product you're designing, same is true for you, man, you were designed for this. Work, make it work, make it form. Set the goals, do the work, go the extra mile. And then this last piece is the main piece. And it'd be hard to think about maybe at, mo at this moment in your life. But as the years progress, you'll think back to this day when this crazy guy come in here telling stories, wearing a blue suit, wearing his Chattanooga alumni pin. And I don't even remember the guy's name, but I remember him saying something about this. Leave a legacy of significance. And what does that mean? Leave a legacy of significance. It doesn't mean you were wealthy, you had so much money you couldn't stand it. it. Doesn't mean any of that, or that you got promoted to a company and you were the top guy or gal or whatever the case may be. This leaving a legacy of significance is about pouring in to other people, all right? It's about leadership. It's about building other people. Based on your experiences, you share with others and you help them do better. I'm here today because I don't get paid for this. There's probably other things I'm probably supposed to be doing today, so y'all don't tell my boss that I'm over here, okay? No, he knows I'm here. I'm here for one reason, and that's hopefully somebody, I've sparked something in you that will make a difference in your life because ultimately I'm, I want you to go out and make a difference in somebody else's life. And that's how we change the entire world, all right? And it starts right here with you. It always starts with you. You don't like something in the world, it starts with you to change it, and make the difference in other people's lives. And when you do that, you will have great success. And Zig Ziglar always said this, and it's not a tactic. If it becomes a tactic, you're gonna lose. But if it's a life philosophy, if it's your mission, in your life, you help enough other people get what they want, then you can have all the things that you want in life. And you'll be surprised how that truth, that, that statement is so true. Help, just help enough other people get what they want, you can have everything in life that you want, all right? Okay, that's all I've got. What questions do you have for me? We good on time so far? Good on time. Any questions for me? Like some, think of some real questions. What do you think? Got one? So you said you work at TVA in the civil department, right? Civil engineering, yes. Yeah, you go in a little bit more about what you specifically do and if you enjoy your job? Yeah, I'll tell you what. So I'll, I'm going to give you a little bit more of that. Do you mind? Okay, so when I started at TVA 28 years ago, I worked in the steam turbine. I'm a mechanical engineer. I worked in the steam turbine group on, uh, on coal-fired plants. So basically we're burning coal, we're making steam, and we're turning a steam turbine to ultimately turn a generator to make power. That's where I started off working. Spent about 15 years in that area. I uh, ended up at a, one of our fossil plants or coal-fired plants in Alabama. I uh, ran, I was a mechanic, I was the maintenance manager, excuse me, an engineering manager there for a couple of years. And I ran that, had about 175 people work for me. It was around the clock. There's a lot of issues, uh, a lot of people issues, uh, human, or human, uh, human uh, performance, human human performance issues, safety issues, you name it, man. It was everything, a uh, good experience. But now I am currently um, the uh, vice president of our civil Civil Projects Group. And what we do with the group I'm in now is uh, we deal with construction associated with retrofitting and modernizing some of the dams, safety, the dams, you know, Chickamauga Dam, concrete structures, uh, any of the civil work that goes there, either the earthen dams or the concrete dams. So I'm doing that work. Then on the back end of all of our fossil plants, we burn coal. So out of burning coal, there was fly ash, ash. It's a byproduct, a waste product from that. It was stored in large ponds. And that's become an environmental issue at this point, you know, 50 years later. And so my group's working on the remediation of all that, you know, cleaning up that coal ash, groundwater treatment, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of civil work. And then inside my group, I also have the heavy equipment division. So all the, what we call yellow iron, you know, all the, you know, barges, uh, cranes, uh, backhoes, anything that's big, heavy stuff that TBA uses anywhere in the entire company. Uh, my, my group supplies all that equipment, the maintenance, the operations, et cetera, et cetera. Does that answer your question? It's a good deal. I'm a mechanical engineer leading a civil group, you know, so it's like they tolerate me, you know. They tolerate me. I use mechanical engineering properties to explain all civil things. So there you go. All right, what else? Anybody else got a question? Anything else? Sure. Yes. Uh, could you give an example in your life where you felt like you might have been uh, in the status quo or complacency and some steps that you took to get past that? Absolutely. Great question. And you will. And you will. There's. It's hard not to end up there, isn't it, Bill? You, you, what we all. It's life is like a roller coaster. I, I tell people. You know, you're you're on the high at one moment, and next moment you're down at the bottom, and it's rough, right? That's that's life that happens to you, and it will happen to every one of you. 
You will not go through life and not have this happen. And you're going to have times where you think, and you just like feel like you're stuck. That's what you're talking about, right? You feel like you're stuck. So you have to find something to, um, to stimulate that desire, right? To get the desire back because you're going, you started to lose it. And one of the things I want to encourage you to think about, and you kind of get, you kind of need this really, you really do need this. You need a life vision. It sounds so stupid a little bit when I say it, but you need it. You, you need a vision of, of what do you want your life to mean? And, and it's hard it, when, you're, when you're 20 years old, when you're 30 years old, I'm gonna tell you, even when you're 40, it's hard to figure out what that, what that is sometimes, okay? But you need a vision and you need, need to live your life on a mission, right? You're on a mission. You're here for some purpose. And sometimes it's hard to figure out what that is, but you want to figure out, kind of figure out that is, and at least head in the direction that you think it is, and start doing things, stimulating yourself when you're going through those downtimes. And one way to do it is you may graduate with undergraduate degree, you may get out into the workforce, you start working, you get a little, you get a little bored, maybe you're not getting recognized, so you think, how am I going to better myself? The company's not investing in me. How do I do something for myself? This is my story personally, okay? Because uh, I thought, man, why don't I get promoted for this? I'm, I can do this, I can do that. 28 years old, I know what I'm doing. Um, but I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. It, but I said, okay, well, I'm gonna go get my master's degree. So I went and got my master's degree. That, that got me an opportunity to, to move on to a management job when I was 29, right? So that got that going. So now some of my things are moving like I want them to, that's good. And I always thought, do I want to get a PhD? I don't know, I, that sounds kind of out there, you know? Especially for a guy from Hickson, Tennessee who struggled to get through math out in Hickson, at Hickson High School, I'll just tell you. I was telling that to the, to the dean here a little while ago. Um, but anyway, I'll tell that story another day. But anyway, you get through that and you get you know, those opportunities happen. Then you're going to hit another spot where you dip down. You need to tell your manager if you're working for somebody, hey, I'm looking for this opportunity. I, I need something different. I need something to keep me going. And I want to do, you need to let your management know what you're interested in, all right? Don't be quiet. Tell them so they can be thinking about you for certain opportunities. And so for me personally, you know, I did all that. I went to Widows Creek. I worked down there. And that about wore me out. Literally, I aged a lot in two years. It was, they, they count it in dog years when you work down there. So it's like 14 years. And it was a long time. And uh, I had two little kids. All that was going on. Anyway, I got back into Chattanooga. And I said, you know, I learned things there that, uh, that from a leadership standpoint that I didn't want to, anybody to ever experience again. Some really things I'm not proud of that, that happened to me while I was there and happened to people that were working uh, for me from upper management. And I thought, I can't ever let that happen again. And I want to get a... PhD and my PhD is in leadership so I wanted a, a, a PhD in leadership to give me so people would believe me when I when I say things right that's the whole reason I got it and, and the other thing is can I do it can I make it through it and I'm gonna tell you it was tough right the master's degree I've got a master's degree in business after being in engineering it wasn't that hard it's just a lot of work but the PhD was hard to get through because I had small children I'm working all the time etc etc so anyway make a long story short which I haven't um, <laughs> you get it, right? You got to find some things to do. Maybe it's get involved at church, get involved in the community, things outside of work to passion, to fuel, fuel your passion in life and your mission, what your life's all about. All right, what else can I? What are the, there was one back here I thought. Oh, okay. Anybody else? I got some books. Uh, what is the most rewarding part of the job that you currently do? I'll tell you, the. the uh, so for me, right, do you know what my mission is? Make a difference in other people's lives. That's it. It has nothing to do with engineering. It has nothing to do with the work I do every day, the literal work I do. Although I love every bit of it, or I love working. I love it. I work all the time. I love it. It's my hobby. But uh, what was the question again? I already forgot. I got, I got fired up there. I got all excited about it, man. Let's ask one more. Yeah, see, I love working. That's pretty satisfying. But the most satisfying, this is the most satisfying, is to uh, have people that work with you and that you're their leader, right? And you have a way to influence their life so that they, you see them advance, right? When they advance, it's like, uh, I, I'm going to use this analogy and I don't want it to be taken the wrong way because sometimes people do, uh, but it's almost like being a father and having children. And you'll un if you don't have children yet, which I suspect most of you don't, but uh, as you raise kids and you start having kids and you start to raise them, and some of you probably do, but uh, as you start to raise, there's, a, there's things that happen there that bring you so much joy, right? As you see them grow and progress and learn and, and, be, and do better. The same is true when you're working with people, adults, right? There's something about that. And like people that have worked 
uh, I say work for me, I don't even mean it like that necessarily, but you, just for the illustration, you understand, uh, as they progress in their career and do really well, I, I love it. That's, that's, where the, that's where the value is. And, I, and there's people that have, and I, and I call them, I check on them, see how they're doing. All right, well, hopefully there's something of value today. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it very much. Yep, thank you very much. Parting gifts, if I like to call that. Scott, we have some things here for you. Uh, the official uh, UTC College of Engineering Computer Science uh, polo shirt, a nice notebook to take more notes and write more goals sound. Awesome. And you're a coffee drinker, I hope. So oh, I am. Good. How do you think I keep up the energy, man? I'm drinking coffee all day long, man. All right, y'all have a good. Thank you very much. Hey, one last thing. If I can be of service to you, man, y'all reach out to me, all right? And I'll be happy to help you if I can in any way, all right? Y'all have a great day. Thank you.